Welcome to Knowledge, the official podcast of the College of Arts and Sciences at Florida State University. I'm your host, Amy Walden, the Assistant Director for Visual and Social Media with the College of Arts and Sciences. And today we welcome Zena Ward from the Department of Philosophy and Tom Needham from the Department of Mathematics right here at Florida State. Zena and Tom, thank you so much for coming to the show. Thanks, Thanks for, having, for us. having me. Great. Um, so to both of you teach classes in FSU's interdisciplinary data science master's degree program, which is part of the College of Arts and Sciences. And today we're discussing data science and some of the ethical considerations of collecting and analyzing data. So Zena, I'd like to start with you. Um, can you tell me about your area of research and what courses you teach in the data science program? Sure. Um, yeah, my research is primarily in philosophy of science, um, especially philosophy of cognitive science. So broadly speaking, I'm interested in um, how scientists study individual differences between people in psychology and neuroscience, um, and also how we use these sorts of patterns of variation to guide our classifications. Um, so for the data science program, I teach the class on data ethics, and I actually have a few projects in this area too. So. Um, Cluster, cl clustering algorithms are often used to sort objects in various sciences. And um, I'm especially interested in what that kind of use of cluster analysis tells us about how we should think about kinds. Um, and I've also got a, a collaborative project on recommender systems. So these are systems like in Netflix and Spotify and Google search that recommend items to us. And a lot of people have noticed that these sorts of systems raise various ethical worries about coercion, autonomy, um, echo chambers, and so forth. And so I'm interested in how we could design these systems uh, to mitigate those sorts of ethical worries. So that's one of my projects um, related to my teaching in the data science program. That's fascinating. And that's something that, you know, we see every day as those recommender systems. Yeah. Tom, same question for you. What's your area of research and what courses do you teach in the data science program? Yeah, so I work uh, on mathematics of data science. Um, <clears throat> specifically, uh, I think about geometry and topology, which are subfields of mathematics, uh, how these are related to data science. Um, so specifically, I, I like to think about complex data where your data objects are themselves complex, like graphs or like surfaces. Imagine like a medical scan or something and you want to understand kind of a, a whole ensemble of, of medical like kind of surfaces, things like this. Yeah, so frequently I'm working in situations where I have this complex data and, and maybe uh, the, the data is sort of sparse. So um, just kind of shoving stuff into a neural network doesn't really work anymore and you need to be a little bit trickier. So mostly I work in the theory side. Uh, I have some kind of more applied projects. I like uh, neuroscience. So I, I uh, study spike train data with some neuroscientists here um, at FSU. Um, I also study political districting data. So you, 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 you know, your states are all carved into political districts. The process of doing this carving is quite complex and mathematically uh, rich. Like the, uh, and I'm interested in kind of the geometry of the space of all districting plans. So I teach math for data science, which is intended for our incoming master students, um, kind of filling in some mathematical background, uh, specifically like linear algebra, vector calculus. Um, and th this is really preparing students to go on and do uh, more advanced stuff. That is kind of like the, the base math knowledge you need to do data science. I also teach a, a course on topological data analysis, which is uh, kind of more towards my uh, research focus. And this is like a more advanced class. Excellent. A major topic of conversation lately has been the ethics of data from methods of collecting it to how the data is analyzed and how it's shared and used. In addition to the disciplines we typically think of when it comes to data science, like mathematics, statistics, computer science, and scientific computing, understanding the ethical considerations of data science is now more important than ever. Zena, what kinds of things do students learn in the ethics of data science class, and why are these skills so important? Yeah, I think for a practicing data scientist, it actually can be pretty easy to uh, be so narrowly focused on your technical problem at hand that you sort of overlook the broader implications. So one of the main goals I have for the data ethics class is just to have students or give them the tools to recognize when there are ethical concerns that might arise in their day-to-day -day work. So that's that's one goal, just sort of uh, helping students figure out what should I be looking out for and um, what issues should I be aware of. And then beyond just the recognition of those issues, um, I think personally it's important for data scientists to be able to articulate why uh, certain moral values are important. So why should we care about privacy? Why should we care about explainability or transparency? Why is fairness important? So um, in my class, we read a variety of perspectives on those questions, often competing perspectives. So for instance, um, we start the semester out of uh, 
uh, reading a few different authors on the value of privacy. So these people agree that privacy is important, but they disagree about why. Um, and, you know, students can make up their own minds about that. But I hope that they leave the course with a, just a more nuanced understanding of those sorts of ethical values and why we might um, why we might prioritize them. And then last thing, a lot of these ethical issues surrounding data science are really unsettled, right? They're tricky and they're that we haven't yet um, decided <laughs> how we want to go or which direction we want to go. So um, in class, I make sure that students have a lot of time to sort of hash out, you know, look at particular concrete cases and, um, you know, participate in discussions about uh, what we should be doing in these very sort of open live issues. You know, I want students to be to leave the program, to leave my class, not thinking about ethics as this sort of constraint or burdensome, right, annoyance, but rather really ready to participate in these ongoing conversations we're having as a society about how to address the ethical challenges we face. Yeah, I feel like it's becoming more and more common to talk about these things in the first place that we weren't even talking about 10, 15 years ago. The demand for skilled data scientists continues to grow, and it seems that just about every company has a data scientist or data analyst on their team now. Tom, what kinds of careers does the interdisciplinary data science master's degree program prepare students for? Yeah, all, all sorts of them, I would <laughs> say. Um, I mean, so what's cool about our program is that it's interdisciplinary. So it's a uh, joint between math, statistics, computer science, scientific computing. So the curriculum's very broad. Um, so there's some more coding focused classes where they're learning Python, SQL, and kind of algorithms. Um, there's also more theory based classes like the class I'm teaching or, or kind of when uh, people start to get into more advanced classes and, and stats or math, that it's very theoretical. Yeah, so, so basically all, all sorts of, of data science jobs uh, from more coding focus like data analyst to more theoretical like machine learning engineers. I think it's also a good jumping off point for people who might want to go uh, and get a PhD afterwards, uh, and in which case this opens you up to doing really more research focused roles um, later on. So I, I've had students that uh, have shown interest in going forward and getting a PhD after the master's. That's great. This question's for both of you. From your unique perspectives, what do you think are some of the most common misconceptions people have about data science, um, specifically when it comes to ethics? Please go first. Okay. <laughs> I think I think some people have a misconception that ethics gives you single right answers, unfortunately, or, uh, you know, ethics provides you ethical thinking provides you a set of tools that you can apply to various problems. Uh, but it rarely gives you a sort of definite solution. I think some people are frustrated that by that. I have some students who are frustrated by that. But um, in my view, uh, it's still really valuable to be able to analyze a problem, you know, understand the moral dimensions of a problem and also pinpoint disagreements. So, you know, if Tom and I have a disagreement about some ethical issue, it's valuable to be able to use ethics to figure out exactly why we disagree and sort of localize the source of that disagreement. Um, so for that reason, I think these tools are valuable, even though they don't provide, you know, single, you know, unique answers most of the time. Right. Yeah. Tom? Yeah. Kind of similar. The, the thing I've been interested in lately is um, how people are using these large language models. Uh, and I think that there's some concerns there about um, kind of misinformation being propagated. So, uh, I mean, in particular, people are using these and taking answers at face value uh, because you ask ChatGPT a question, it gives you this very confident answer um, that sounds like right, uh, you might think. Uh, <laughs> But you have to remember, like, I mean, th these things are trained on data that's scraped off the internet, which is filled with misinformation. Um, nobody kind of really understands how these things work. There, there's all this randomness involved. Um, so I think these are great tools. Uh, you have to kind of think about the output and uh, make sure that you can verify or understand what it's telling you. Um, so in my class, for example, I gave them a quiz uh, where I asked ChatGPT to prove some mathematical statement, and, and it spit out this kind of very um, confident, right-seeming answer uh, with a, a totally wild logic flaw in the middle of it that made it totally invalid. Um, and if you just take it at face value, it's like, okay, here's the proof. Um, but then the, the task for the quiz was figure out you know, exactly which step went wrong and can you fix it. Um, so I think these sort of skills are, are going to be very important going forward as these become kind of more of a part of our lives and our, our jobs. Absolutely, because we hear about chat GPT and AI almost every day now, and this is something that didn't even exist a few years ago. Do you think that these will start to improve with people kind of understanding these misconceptions better? I hope so. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, yeah, you can see it going either way. I think it's a bit too early to call. Um, but I mean, I think people who are adopting this and kind of 
keeping in mind what it is. It's a tool for doing certain tasks. Um, we'll get very good at it and we'll uh, become very successful at using these, but keeping in mind that um, they're not perfect. Uh, I can see lots of more nefarious things coming out of this also the other way. So uh, it's hard for me to guess how it's going to go. Yeah. Yeah. I think people are more and more aware of the hallucination problem with these large language models, the fact that they can say things confidently that are very wrong. And, you know, there are these new uh, ethical guidelines being issued. The White House just a couple of weeks ago announced these um, uh, new sort of AI guidelines, including a program for introducing watermarking to generative generative AI. So we want to be able to figure out when certain content, either textual content or images, um, have been created with generative AI. And you know, I think that's a sort of exciting area of future research and future policymaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. So we end every podcast with our bowl of mystery questions. So Zena and Tom, please draw a question and you guys can both answer. I'll read it and you can go first. Yeah, okay, so, uh, <laughs> that's fair. What's one thing you would bring with you on a deserted island? Uh, okay, what would I bring on a deserted island? Uh, something to do, I guess, maybe like a, a musical instrument or something to, to learn. Is that a lame answer? <laughs> no, not at all. That's a great answer. I was going to go for musical instrument. Uh, I'm glad I went first. <laughs> you guys, um, think alike. <laughs> yeah. um, let's see. I mean, some some massive novel or philosophical text that you could, you know, explore for a lifetime, I think. Some some big book. Those are both terrific answers. I love it. Zena and Tom, thank you both so much for joining us today on Knowledge. And if you would like to learn more about the interdisciplinary data science master's degree program here at FSU, visit datascience.fsu.edu. Thanks for joining us on Knowledge, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.